Welcome to our video on LaTeX command line, which is part of our DevOps series of videos. LaTeX command line is a very powerful part of the LaTeX suite of applications. And essentially what it does is to allow you to do almost all the operations that you would do in a user interface uh, with LaTeX architect in command line mode. Uh, and this becomes very useful when you are uh, making LaTeX part of uh, your continuous integration uh, so that you can generate the metrics automatically, so that you can uh, look at architectural erosion. Um, and it's also useful um, when you make it part of uh, your, the part of automation for your tool chain. We'll bring up a command prompt and I'll walk you through the commands uh, one by one. Uh, we'll do four, four different uh, types of commands. We'll sh I'll show you how to create and update projects, how to generate a variety of reports. Uh, you can run scripts, scripts that you write yourself or scripts that, that we provide. And you can publish the results uh, uh, to, to the LaTeX repository uh, and then see them in LaTeX web. All right, so let's get started. Uh, let me bring up uh, the command prompt. And the first thing we'll do in the command prompt is to set the path. So let's set the path. I have LaTeX 10.8.1 installed. And now that I have set the path, uh, I can actually run any of my command line, uh, any of my LDC commands, which are the command line commands. So the first command that I want to sh run is LDC license. So if you don't have a license installed, this is, uh, this is how you will install the license, LDC license, and you'll provide the, the license file that, uh, uh, that's been provided, that, that you obtained from us. Um, so let's install the license. So there it is. I have now, I'm in the process of installing it, and I have now installed my command line uh, program. So now let's go uh, and look at uh, how to create and update projects. So the first thing, uh, the command that will be used to create and update projects is called LDC update. And here is an example of that command, LDC update, which is creating a project file called nant.ldz, that's the name of the file I specified, and it's being created from a DLL for the .NET module of LaTeX. So LDC update, and now I'm ready to run LDC update, and I'm generating the project file, and, uh, uh, and the project file will now be generated uh, once this command completes. So there it is, I have now run LDC update, and I have generated nant.ldc. If we take a look at our files, uh, then we can see that we just now we generated the nant.ldc file. Let's uh, do that, uh, repeat that process for a few other kinds of modules. I'll start with the Java module. So let's first create the project again the same way, and this time we'll provide and 141.jar so let's copy that let's now now this time my module is java and i'm running uh, i'm i'm loading ant 141.jar and there i have now created the project ant.ldz and if i were to go to my latex architect and i could if i were to open that project file that i just generated created ant.ldz and i open it and you'll find that I have actually loaded the, the project. If we go to project properties and look at the data source, then you'll see that we have loaded ant141.jar file. All right, great. Let's close this project. And now what I'm going to do is, I've so far, all you have seen me is create projects. Now I'm going to update my, the, the the project that I just created, and I created it using ant141.jar. I'm going to now update it with ant151.jar. And so I specify the same project file, ant.ldz, but this time the file actually exists, and my input is 151.jar. 
And notice that it's now updating the project instead of saving the project this time. And now let's go back to our Latex Architect and let's open that same ant.ldz file that we had before. And if you look at the DSM, you'll see that it's, got, it's a little bigger. But let's be sure, let's go to Project Properties and if you look at Data Sources, now it's got 151 in it instead of 16, instead of 141. Uh, and so we have now updated that project. Let's complete the process of updating this project with 161. And we'll now, this time, we'll actually generate the update report along with it. So now I'm updating the project with 161. And I'm going to generate a report file called ant.html. So let's take go to files and take a look at it. And there we've just generated the file ant.html. Let's open that file. And there it is. You can see that it, this is the update report. For those of you who are familiar with it, you can actually see an update report which says what, what are the things that are no longer exist, what are the new elements that have shown up, what are the changed elements, what are the new violations that you've introduced in the project, and perhaps you may have fixed a few violations as well. Finally, let's take a look at creating a project, a C++ project this time. The input to this LDC update is the name of the project. The module we are choosing for C++ is the Clang module. And we are looking, uh, we're looking to build, uh, uh, we're, the input is a build specification file. And so that's an XML file that we have specified as input. Uh, and now we're running LDC update, uh, and we have now generated a project for, um, for ISO AG lib. And if we, if we want, we can actually go ahead and load that project up. So if we say open, uh, there it is. We've created that project, and now that project now exists. So this is uh, the end of uh, using the command line to create and update projects.